Good morning, MCC. Uh, you may think we've gone a little overboard on the Christmas thing here, but this is our only opportunity um, to sing carols with you on a Sunday morning. I will give you a sneak peek that next week, Wednesday worship is going to be carols. But for now, we are going to enjoy some carols together and get into the Christmas spirit. If you're a Grinch like the red t-shirted man over there, hopefully this puts a smile on your face. We're going to start by singing, O Come, All You Faithful. Did I mention I'm, we're glad that you're here? We're glad that you're here.
cross would offer his only son who else invites me to call him father only a holy God only a holy God only a holy God oh so come and behold the one and the only I want to call me forever a holy God come and worship the holy God oh so God, we are here this morning um, to worship you because you are the only Holy One. We acknowledge that you came as a baby around this time of year um, to bring us hope and to bring us peace and to bring us joy. And so we thank you for your birth. We thank you that we can celebrate you, but we also thank you that we know the rest of the story and we, we can be excited about what is to come. Thank you, God, for being here uh, with us, Emmanuel. Amen. Hey, it would be amiss if we didn't finish uh, by singing Joy to the World. That is, of course, uh, the song that we're basing our Christmas series off. Joy to the world, the Lord is come. This week, let earth receive her King. Um, let us receive uh, Jesus this morning as we sing together.
And that really is our heart. Um, each Sunday as we come and we do worship um, is that our heart is prepared to let um, him in and give us, uh, give us his wisdom and his peace and his joy. Um, so I pray that your hearts are ready to let him in and whoever else um, is to be invited. Um, but I just want to say thank you for singing with us. Thank you for singing us this year and especially in lockdown. Um, we've loved um, singing with you, albeit um, distantly, um, and we're looking forward to singing together very soon. Merry Christmas. Good morning and welcome to MCC House Churches. Hope you're enjoying the new style and, and being all together. No mai, haere mai, tēnā tato katoa. Uh, my name's Ian Waddington, I'm the Sunday Congregation Pastor, and, uh, and welcome. Welcome to our, our service this morning. Psalm 134 says, Come bless the Lord, all you servants of the Lord who stand by night or by day uh, in the house of the Lord. Lift up your hands to the holy place and bless the Lord. And let's do that together today. Uh, various things that are happening in the next uh, week or so. There's the uh, House Church Leaders Zoom is coming up on Monday at 8 o'clock. So um, that's catching up on how we're doing and also a little bit on the Activity Sunday that's coming up as well. Wednesday Worship will be special with a Carol's edition. So look forward to that. That'll be brilliant. 7.30 as usual. Uh, CR is continuing to Zoom for now. So uh, watch out for that. And uh, we also have our Christmas donation, which is um, uh, based on, on children this year. So we have 25 children that are aged between nine months and 13 years. And if you'd like to give a, a Christmas gift to them, um, you can either buy something for a child or make a donation. Then message Libby or email to the hello at massycommunitychurch.co. Dot nz email you can make a donation to the church account with reference help christmas or you can ask for a child to buy for um, the value is about 10 to 20 dollars so if you're buying gifts they need to be dropped off to the church by the 19th of december so uh, hopefully that's brilliant uh, let's pray together thank you for your offerings as always let's pray for the offerings and for our time together this morning let's pray Father, thank you for the gift of your Son that we remember in this Advent season. Thank you for the gifts you give us in this world, in the, the weather that we experience, in the, in the joys that we have of coming together, in the gift of your church. We pray that this morning we would continue to worship you, we would hear your word, open our eyes and our ears by your Holy Spirit, we pray and help us to enjoy our company together, to enjoy you. We ask in Jesus' name. Amen. So let's turn now to Tony and his message. Before Grandad speaks, I can honor an auntie that I'm going to do reading. Luke 1, 46 to 55, Mary's Song of Praise. Oh, how my soul praises the Lord. <laughs> how my spirit rejoices in God my Saviour. For he took notice of his lowly servant girl, and from now on all generations will call me blessed. For the mighty one is holy, and he has done great things for me. He shows mercy from generation to generation to all who fear him. His mighty arm has done tr tremendous, tremendous things. He has scattered the proud and haughty ones. He has brought down princes from their thrones and exalted the humble. He has filled the hungry with good things and sent the rich away with empty hands. He has helped his servant Israel and remembered to be merciful, for he made this promise to our ancestors, to Abraham 
and his children forever. Psalm 98. Sing a new song to the Lord, for he has done wonderful deeds. His right hand has won a mighty victory. His holy arm has shown his saving power. The Lord has announced his victory and has revealed his righteousness to every nation. He has remembered his promise to love and be faithful to Israel. He in the ends of the earth have seen it the victory of our God. Shout to the Lord, all the earth, break it out in praise and sing for joy with the harp and mel melodious song, with trumpets and the sound of ram's horn. Make a joyful symphony before the Lord, the King, let the sea and everything in it shout his praise. Let the rivers clap their hands in glee. Let the hills sing out their song of joy before the Lord. For he, has, he is coming to judge the earth. He will judge the world with justice and for nations with fairness. Good morning. Kia ora te whanau. Uh, kia ora to the family of God, which is Massey Community Church. And welcome to all those who are joining from other parts of Auckland, New Zealand and other parts of the world who have found this broadcast. This morning's message is part of our Advent series based on the hymn by Isaac Watts, uh, Joy to the World, perhaps the one of the world's most famous and most loved Christmas carols. And the phrase that I'm going to feature this morning is, let earth receive her king. The theme being joy leading to hope. In usual Advent series, uh, there are usually four sermons preached on the themes of hope, faith, joy, and peace, not necessarily in that order. Uh, I'm linking joy and hope. As I said, this morning's uh, message is based on the one phrase in, from the song of the hymn or the Christmas carol, Joy to the World, written by Isaac Watts in 1719. This song is over 300 years old. When Isaac Watts wrote it, he didn't write a Christmas carol. He was writing a poem. First, he wrote a poem inspired by Psalm 98, which has already been read to us and is one of our readings for the, for the morning. However, then it was set to music and it's become a beloved Christmas carol. Let earth receive her king. Joy to the world reminds us that this is a season of joy. It's a season of joy because the king has already come. Jesus has come. And Jesus is the king. And Jesus was worshipped as king by the Magi, those wise men from the east who tracked Jesus down because of the star, as recorded in Matthew chapter 2, verse 11. And so this is a season of joy, and joy to the world emphasizes this because the king has already come. There lies our joy. But it's also a season of joy because Jesus is king. Jesus is the Lord and savior of the whole earth. This phrase says, let earth receive her king. And this reminds us, and it's very, very important, that Jesus is not just one among many gods. Christianity is not just one religious option or pathway among many. Christianity makes a very exclusive and not negotiable claim about Jesus, as Jesus himself made a very exclusive and not negotiable claim that he is the king of the world, 
that he is the unique son of God, that he is the savior of all who will receive him. And this exclusive claim that Jesus is the only way to the Father, as John puts it, or as John records Jesus saying it in John chapter 14, verse 6, it's central to the identity of Jesus and to the message of Jesus and the message of the gospel. It's not so popular for us to emphasize that, but at this time of the year and thinking of this song and this phrase, let earth receive her king, reminds us that there is great joy because the king we worship, the king we have received, the king who has come is Lord and Savior of the whole earth, the Savior of all mankind who will believe in him, who will receive him, who will trust in him, who will believe on him, and who will yield their lives to him. And this is a season of joy because Everyone who accepts the truth of the Christian gospel, everyone who receives Jesus as king, everyone who recognizes that Jesus is Lord and Savior, becomes a child of the living God by adoption into his family because they have received Jesus. Once again, in in John's gospel, John chapter 1 verse 12, for as many as received him, to them God gave the right to become children of God. And fourthly, the uh, this song res- reminds us that this is a season of joy because believing in Jesus, that is receiving him as Lord and Savior through faith and repentance, leads every believer from darkness into his marvelous light. First Peter verse chapter chapter two verse nine. The Isaiah passage that was read already talks about the people in darkness have seen a great light. When we receive Christ, when we become followers of Jesus through faith and repentance, we we move out of darkness into the marvelous light of God in Christ, the light of the gospel. And it's one of the most marvelous experiences that is possible in our lives. When we receive Jesus, we also move from death to new life, to an eternal life. It's recorded that in John chapter 5, verse 20, 24, and Paul speaks of it also in Ephesians chapter 2, verse 6. So believing in Jesus, receiving the King, takes us from death to life. In Jesus' own teaching, in Luke chapter 15, he tells three different parables about things that were lost and then were found. And it's Jesus' way of teaching about the importance of the gospel that before we come to believe in Jesus, we are lost, whether we realize it or not. This is very a very meaningful metaphor for me personally, because when I became a Christian, I realized just how lost I was. There was a sense in which I knew I was lost, but I didn't actually know where I was. I was trying to find out what I was, who I was, what I was called to do and to be. I had no passion for anything. And yet when I received Jesus, I learned immediately. I once was lost, but now I'm found. Of course, that is a phrase out of that great hymn by John Newton. But that theme comes from Jesus' teaching in Luke chapter 15. The lost coin that was found, the lost sheep that was found, the lost son who returned home, who was found. And when we receive the king, we move from condemnation to forgiveness. 
Paul makes this clear in his explanation of the gospel in Romans chapter 8, verse 1. We move from condemnation, condemnation by the law. We move into forgiveness and the, all of the freedom that forgiveness brings because we receive Jesus, our Lord, our Savior and King. And when we receive the King, we move from failure to victory. Victory over sin's penalty because of the penalty that Christ has paid. Victory over the power of sin because of the Holy Spirit that invades our lives when we become followers of Jesus, when we receive the King. And victory over the presence of sin because we are able to flee from it and flee from it to the protection of our Lord and Saviour, Jesus. And when we receive the King, we move from shame, from the awful feeling of dishonour and shame because of our sin and because of the dishonour it brings on us and our families and our communities and our people. But we moved into a place of honour because we're adopted as children of, of the living God. Whether we're adopted brothers and sisters of King Jesus. We're given a new clean conscience. The writer to the Hebrews in both the chapter 9 verse 24 and chapter 10 verse 22 speaks about our consciences being cleansed. We're able to be freed from that. It's not that we necessarily forget every evil or wrong thing we ever did, but we no longer are bound by the shame of it because we have turned away from it, we have moved away, we've changed our minds, we've had a complete change of direction, and we come into a place of honour and clean conscience and we can move forward with freedom. And the fifth reason that this uh, song is a song of joy, let earth receive her king, is because receiving Jesus is receiving a leader, a king, a lord, a rule, the ruler of our lives, who's full of truth and grace. You know, in the ancient world, all most of what people knew about rulers, emperors, governors, were cruel, harsh rulers who ruled with an iron fist, who had punishing laws. And yet John's Gospel tells us when Jesus came, he came full of grace and truth. He told us the truth. He told us the truth about ourselves. He told us the truth about our condition. He told us the truth about our destiny unless we believe in him. He told us how serious our sin was. He told us how impossible it was for us to save ourselves. And yet he came full of grace, showing undeserved favour to everybody he met and forgiving the unworthy like us. And so that's why joy to the world and let earth receive her king are all those reasons why we have joy, because the King has come. But that's not the end of the story, because we're in a, his we're in the, a place in history between when the King has come and when the King will come again. And so the Christian faith, for all believers, for everybody who has received Jesus as King, as Lord, as Saviour, we have hope. The word hope is often used in our everyday language, actually in a very weak sense. We often use the phrase, I hope so, to mean actually I don't think it will, but I wish it would. 
Whereas in the New Testament, the word hope is a word full of surety and certainty and the firm knowledge that what we hope for is going to happen. The Christian hope is a very firm hope because of who Jesus is, because of his teaching, because of his character, because of his sacrificial death to cover the penalty for our sin because of his resurrection, because of his ascension to the Father and because of his promise that he would return. And so let earth receive her king has both a past aspect. The king has already come, but the king has gone back to the Father and we are awaiting him. And so we are full of hope. We're waiting when yet again the earth will receive the king. And so we have hope. Firstly, we have hope because Jesus has returned to the Father to intercede for us. And as he says, as John records in John chapter 14, 3, he has gone to prepare a place for us. And that's why we have hope. We have hope that the king will come having prepared an eternal home for us with himself. We also have hope because we recognize when we become followers of Jesus that our lives on earth are meaningful, but they're not the end. And everything we do here has meaning and purpose in the plan of God, but the plan in its fulfillment is the granting of eternal life to all who receive the King. And so we have a new life now. We have a life indwelt by the Holy Spirit. We have the character of eternal life within us already. And we have the hope of eternal life that is waiting for us. And there's a sense that we, that we, we don't fully belong here. Paul says in Philippians chapter 3 that we are our citizenship is in heaven and from there we await the Savior. And that's why this song, Joy to the World, is a song of joy but also a song of hope because we're awaiting the second coming of the King. And thirdly, it's a message of hope because when Jesus returns, and we don't know when that will be, and nobody knows, and you shouldn't believe anybody who says they do. When Jesus returns, he will finally defeat for all time the devil and all his works. He will create a new heaven and a new earth and he will dwell in the midst of it, in the midst of his people. And there is that wonderful, wonderful uh, last chapter of the Bible in Revelation chapter 22, which looks forward to what we're looking forward to, to the time in the new heaven and the new earth, eternal life in the direct, immediate presence of God, Father, Son, and Holy Spirit. When the King will have come fully and finally and forever. And finally, this song gives us great hope because it reminds us that in the new heaven and the new earth with Jesus on the throne, there will be no more death. No more sickness, no more tears. Death is a part of life for us. We are all mortal. We are all going to die. And yet Jesus reassures us, if you, though you die, yet you will live. It's a promise that's conditional. It's conditional on receiving the King. And Revelation 21 verse 4 says there will be no more death, no more sickness, no more tears. 
And that's the hope we have when we receive the King and when we will receive the King in the future when he comes in fullness to, to bring his kingdom to a climax, to bring all of his people together in the new heaven and the new earth forever. And so I conclude, my friends, and to those of you who are listening this morning, I conclude with an appeal. You see, let earth receive her king is an, an exhortation and encouragement. It's a plea. It's not a command. It's a plea. Please receive the king. Receive him as Lord and Savior. Believe in him. Believe in who he is, that he is the unique son of God, that he came from the Father to explain God to us. He came in order to live and to die for for the sins of everyone who would believe that he was raised from death, that he's returned to the Father and he will return in glory. I plead with you. In Paul's terminology, Paul speaks of us who are believers as being ambassadors. And he says, it is though Christ is through us appealing, pleading with you, be reconciled to God. And I do, I plead with you. If you have not received the King personally, if you have not believed personally, if you have not entrusted yourself fully and unconditionally to Jesus as Lord and Saviour and King, please believe on him. Put all your trust in him. Surrender to him. And you know what? You will find joy and you will find hope, which are the two great themes of this great Christmas song, Joy to the World, the Lord Has Come. I want to just close with a benediction. I'd like to read a scripture to you and then close in prayer. This comes from Jude's very short letter just before the revelation in the New Testament. Now all glory to God, who is able to keep you from falling away and will bring you with great joy into his glorious presence without a single fault. All glory to him who alone is God, our Saviour, through Jesus Christ our Lord. All glory, majesty, power and authority are his before all time, in the present and beyond all time. Amen. Thanks for listening. I really do pray that you will take seriously this message, that you will respond not to me, but that you will respond to Christ this morning. Let earth receive her king. Please receive the king. Let's pray. Lord, how grateful we are that indeed Jesus has come. We are so grateful that he has revealed himself to be the Lord, to be the Saviour, to be the one way to the Father, to be the King of the world and the world that is to come. We thank you that we're able to connect electronically. O oh Lord, how we long to gather again. And we will do that and we will remember you and thank you and praise you. And I thank you for all my brothers and sisters who are part of Massey Community Church and part of any church and part of the body of Christ that is your global people. I thank you in the name of Jesus, our Lord. Amen. Thank you and have a great day.